Yeah, we're going to talk about a very, um, a very spooky and very personal topic for me. And if I'm silent for, for parts of it, that means I'm trying to keep composure from what I'm about to say. I have not told anyone about this outside of my sister. And this has not had left my home. This is very serious shit. I am saying this completely serious. That when I say this is going to be emotional, this is not a joke or anything like that. This is something that really, really, that's tough for me to talk about. And I'm also doing this because I plan to send a clip of this to another YouTuber named Beardo. And because he's a paranormal investigator and a debunker and I just kind of wanted his opinion of it. So, um, here we go. About, coming up on about two years ago, my aunt died. My great aunt died, but she was my aunt. And we were still very close. She was like a second mother to me. Like, when I was like four or five years old, I remember us living in an apartment, and my aunt and her and, and my uncle lived down the street from us, and every time they needed to babysit me, they, they always like to babysit me and I have memories of just hanging out in their apartment looking at this stuff all this old stuff around the around the place looking at my uncle gut fish because he was a fisherman and my aunt was just the sweetest woman ever and she would just let me watch TV and I would just watch pole position and all this other stuff and when they eventually moved out of their apartment and into a house they let me and my family stay there so for like, from between the ages of, I want to say five to 13 years old, that was where I lived. It wasn't cramped or anything like that. It was a very, very nice house. Me and my sister shared a room. My mom, my parents had a room and, and uncle had a room. And that's where I spent my formative years. That's where I got my Nintendo entertainment system. And that's where I learned how, how to, that, that I got money, a little bit of change from my aunt and uncle for taking out the trash and what have you and learned the value of hard work. And this was all while my mother was in medical school and my father was still working a, a somewhat less paying job. And when they finally had enough money to get to rent that, our own house, which is this house that I'm living in right now, it's all because of my aunt and uncle. So, but, she, but even though we moved out, we still stayed like really close. Like she would come over for dinner and food and what have you. And after my uncle died, I would, uh, after school on the weekends, she like didn't like staying by herself, so she would always let me, she always have me come over to her house on the weekends, and I could just stay up, watch TV, eat whatever I want, do whatever I wanted. But I, I never took advantage of her generosity and her kindness because um, I wanted to do right by her. And it, it was just like this for a long time. Like, uh, like a couple of years back, she was staying with us for for over the holidays because she wasn't feeling too good. And on the on Christmas Eve, um, we had to call an ambulance for her because she had a stroke. And I remember the the um, because of the way my parents' room was situated, she had they we they couldn't get a stretcher in there. So me, my dad, and the paramedics had to physically lift her out of the bed and carry her out of the bedroom and put her on the stretcher. And I remember her looking up at me with these confused eyes like she didn't know what was going on I just looked down at her I smiled and I said everything's gonna be okay thankfully she recovered from the stroke she spent and she recovered over here with us so uh, needless to say we were I was very close to my aunt she was my favorite aunt she was everybody's favorite aunt and about two years ago uh, we had a, a little family dinner at my aunt's place and it was like it was just a get together for the family on, on New Year's Eve. So me and my dad and my nephews went there and we had a good time. I met my co got to meet my cousin BB, who's like a big brother to me. And we got to reconnect. I hadn't seen him since I was a teenager, so it was good to see him. It was good to see everybody. My aunt, who had been in and out of the hospital at this point, she was healthy, vivacious. She was having a good time. Everyone was just smiling and having fun. She drank some wine. We all had a good time. And then as I was leaving, I turned back to her and I said, um, I, I look forward to seeing you on next Sunday. We're going to have a plate ready for you because she always come over Sundays and my mom always made extra food for her. And she's like, okay, baby, I see you then. And I, I said goodbye and she smiled at me and walked out the door. And 
That's the last time I saw her alive. She went back in the hospital like a couple of months later. And I thought this was just going to be like another normal checkup sort of thing. And I remember it was like a Monday night. And I hear my mom crying in the other room. I go in there. I think she's have. I thought she was having an attack or something. Like she was in pain. She usually cries out when she's in pain. And she, she she's crying and she says through tears that your aunt's heart stopped and they had to bring her back a couple of times, but they're still working on her. I just leave my room and I just went back into my bed and I just laid there. I couldn't sleep. And like three hours later. I hear my mom talking on the phone. I'm like, okay, things must be okay. And I go in there and she's talking with a nurse on the phone. And I just ask her, is she gone? And she just nods her head. <sighs> and I just went back to my room and I'm sorry. It's this, this, like I said, this is, this is hard for me to do. I'm still not over it. It. I've had members of my family growing up that passed away. My aunt, my, uh, one of my aunts passed from COVID. My grandmother, whom I loved, my uncle, my grandfather on my dad's side, whom I, I, I loved dearly. And it didn't hurt me like this. And this one hurt. And I, st and I, st I still have dreams about it, you know? I remember the first time I, I, rem I, re I remember having a dream about her weeks after she died. And I was in a dream. I was at her house. She was by my side and we were eating. And then I just looked up at her. And then something in my head just told me, this is a dream, isn't it? And she just nodded her head and she, I just told her, look. still dream about her sometimes, but every time I see her in her dreams, I just say the same thing, I love you and I miss you. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shit. <sighs> Alright. So, I didn't go to a funeral. I never liked funerals. I never went, I, I never did. Everybody knows that, but I, I, the reason is, I never told anybody this, but that the last memory I have of her is that, is that, Chris, is that New Year's Eve, when she was happy and when she was alive, and I want to keep that memory. I don't want my last memory of her to be dead in a coffin or being lowered into the earth or anything like that. I want that memory to be mine. And and I remember, uh, it was months later, my other aunt, who's currently living with us right now, my aunt's sister, and I remember going over there and seeing all of the, the house just bare and all of her stuff being packed up and being sold off. And there was this little porcelain figurine of this really fat woman in a, in, in, a, in a bathing suit and it's the, it's the little porcelain figurine that I always associated with her, you know? And some just told me just to take it. And I took it and I, and it's in my room right now. It is, uh, it's on my nightstand next to my lamp. So every time I think of my aunt, I just look at that, that, that porcelain statue. So yeah, that's, I told you I was going to get emotional. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So, um, 
that was my memory. That is my memory that I want to take with her, that I take with me for the rest of my life. That last memory of her smiling, and I wasn't going to replace that memory for nothing. I haven't been to her grave. I haven't been to the house since we cleaned it out. I don't want to go back over there again because it's not a home anymore. It's a house. It's not the house that I grew up in. It's not the house that she lived in. It's just a house. So there's that. All right. But now we get to the spooky part. Now, I want to make this clear. As I showed in my... Um, in, in my in the uh, pre, in that that video in that small segment with sightings that I'm a firm believer in the paranormal, the supernatural, and the extraterrestrial have been since I was a kid. Uh, I follow the presets of the early ghost hunters from that the, those rotor rooter guys from Taps. You know, if you don't know, it, ghost hunters was about a group of guys named uh, a group of guys who were rotor rooters by day and paranormal investigators by night. And they often get called to haunted locations and haunted houses and explore and look the place over. And th they had an, a unique way of doing it. What they would do, they would go into the uh, residence and they would go in there with the mind of a skeptic, you know? And um, they would just go in there to try to debunk things. Be and that's what the kind of mentality I have when it comes to paranormal investigation. Go in there with the mind of a skeptic. You can be a believer if you want, but you have to go in there and be skeptical of what you see and what you hear, because if you go in there believing that the place is legitimately haunted, then every sound, every bump, every shadow, every creak, every crack, all of it is going to be the place is haunted without any empirical evidence. You go in, most of the time when they go there and they see something weird or experience something weird, they try to debunk it and say, no, oh, this was just the the, 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 the radiator or the sound was just somewhere else or it's just shadows thrown, being thrown from the cars or what have you. And they would then present the evidence after they go over and scrutinize it to the people that they were working with to say, this is what we found out, take of it what you will. Now, unfortunately, YouTube has been a, a massive proliferation of so-called paranormal investigators who do a, a bunch of bullshit and um, hold on oh, thank you huh. alright so that's my dad he had to hand me something so anyway um, the, the so the paranormal invest so all these paranormal channels and they're either they don't do the diligence of debunking this shit or they just outright fake it and this is where this is where I, I, I have to reference my boy Beardo who is a paranormal investigator and a professional debunker who goes through these videos scrubs them did down to look at the evidence and debunk them in it but if he says it's something paranormal he doesn't say it's all paranormal or it's all the or it's all fake or anything like that he just goes through it with a fine tooth comb. I'll look that up in a, in a bit, hairball. So, I, I say all this, and I'm gonna, before I tell you this, this is, this is what I'm into, what I've been building up to, why I got so emotional earlier and why I'm building up to this, because ever since my aunt died, some really weird stuff has been going on. Like, earlier this year, um, my mom, uh, I, w I woke up, um, from um, from they go make some breakfast and my mom asked me what were you doing in here last night and I look up at it and it's like I wasn't in here last night because she says this because sometimes when I can't sleep I'll stay up and write or watch t or watch some movies or what have you and I'll go into the, to the kitchen to make something to eat and she can see into the kitchen from her bedroom so if she sees something moving around in there it's typically me getting something to eat or getting something to drink and I told her I wasn't in there I was dead asleep and she's like, are you sure? Like, yeah, I was dead asleep. I, I was out and I was knocked out. And she's like, I saw some, a shadow moving around in the kitchen. I thought it was, I thought it was you. She's like, okay. And then I asked my dad, who was pro who sleeps in the other room. And he's, this is when he was working. So he had, he, they had separate bed, bedrooms because she stayed up late and he wanted to get his rest. So, and I asked him, were you up in here late at night? And he's like, no. You know me. I don't. I don't. I don't roam around the house. I got to get up early in the morning to work. All right. So I kind of write off. Maybe she was dreaming. I didn't want to initially believe anything of it. Then later on, she kept saying. She said she saw a shadow moving around from the kitchen into the in the washroom because the washroom is right across from my mom's bedroom. And okay. Okay. You may be seeing something. Okay. 
I was I was somewhat skeptical, but then one day my parents went to Livingston, which is like an hour from te- from from Houston, and I was home alone. And I was like, decided to you know make me something to eat. And so, as I was eat- making something to eat, washing my hands and what have you, I look up. And I swear I see a shadow go from my mom's room into the washroom. I think somebody's there, so I get a fucking knife and I'm like ready to go John Wick on somebody. And I look around. There's nobody there. I'm totally alone. We don't have any pets. We don't. It's just me and my parents that live here. Well, now with my aunt, but she's only been living here for like a week. But so I was like, okay, what the hell was that? And then, like a couple of months later, uh, uh, my mom, middle of the day, calls me into her room. Now, I want to keep the preface this by mind before I say go any further. My mom is not a believer in the paranormal. She doesn't believe in ghosts or spirits. She's very religious, but she doesn't believe in this uh, the paranormal stuff. She would only say this kind of stuff to try to scare my nephews back when they were younger. Like, ooh, the boogeyman's going to get you. <laughs> All this other stuff and try to scare people, folks. So I'm going to preface this by saying she is not a firm believer in this stuff. So I walk in there and she, she asks me, and she looks up on the bed. And she's wide awake and she says, son, believe me when I tell you this, I saw your aunt at the doorway right there, full as day, like she was alive, right there, I swear to God. And then after that, she just starts crying. Like she just legitimately breaks down in tears. And I'm looking at her like, I was ready to just say, this must have been a dream or something or something like that and I look and she but she just starts crying she's not a woman that easily cries over stuff and she and she's crying I'm like okay maybe you did see something and I'm like and like she saw the holy grail of paranormal investigation she saw a full body apparition I want to see now she does sleep during the day but and she does have nightmares occasionally, but nothing that makes her emotional. And for her to sit there and start crying and doing what she does. Okay, sorry, that was, that was another thing. Uh, so for her to sit there and just start crying, openly weeping for at this at this um, at this moment, that told me all I need to know. Like I think she, what she experienced was real. Fast forward to a couple of weeks. It's like two o'clock in the morning for me. It's, I'm wide awake. I can't sleep. Keep in mind, I'm wide awake. I don't drink. I haven't had any pills or substances. I do eat wee gummies to help with anxiety and, and, and helping me get to sleep. I, I was clean. I was so I was straight edge that night. I was playing on my switch. I had the YouTube up in the background and all this other stuff. My dad was getting up going to the bathroom and he was because he's he's an old man you have to go to the bathroom and and he typically goes there and just goes right back to sleep he's a fast sleeper so and my door was halfway open not all the way not like cracked or not wide open but just halfway in between enough that i could see into the hall it was dark as night and dark as death outside uh, out in the hallway with a few lights on and i'm why and i'm playing my thing i'm playing my game and i'm look and something told me to just say look up and I turn right around I look at the doorway and I swear to you on all that I have right now I saw two eyes looking into my room not a head not a person not a body just two eyes floating in the middle of the air just looking into my room I spaz out, and I, I think that's my dad or something, but I, I think that's my mom, but I didn't hear them come in there or anything like that. I, I immediately grab my phone, I turn on the I turn on this flashlight, I shine in the door, nobody there. I immediately go into debunk mode, I get out of my room, I go to my dad's room across the hall, and I say, and I look in there, he's snoring like the dickens, he is dead to the world. I go into my mom's room, she is knocked out watching an old West western movie like she wants to do. And before anybody says it, there is no between the time when I saw the eyes and the time when I picked up my um, phone to shine a light in there was like a couple of seconds. It was literally a couple of seconds. And my parents are not the fastest movers. And I just w- went around the kitchen. I went around the house, went into the, to the um, 
I went to the garage, I went into the hallway, I went in the bathroom, I went in the kitchen, I went into the laundry room, I saw nobody, and I just was standing in the middle of the kitchen trying to make sense of what the fuck I just saw. And it, it didn't scare me, it just freaked me out. And I wanted to make sure I saw what I saw. I wanted, didn't want to just automatically jump to say I saw a ghost. I wanted to ignore, I wanted to eliminate every potential possibility of who it could have been or what it could have been. And after a few minutes, my mom gets up, she finds me and she gets up to get something to eat. She sees me in the kitchen and she's like, oh, you're gonna eat? And I just don't answer. I'm just, have my eyes are just wandering around. And she's like, what's wrong with you? And I just straight, I, I, I did, I, I, at first I didn't want to tell her, I didn't want to freak her out, but then I just say, I, I'll just tell her like, Ma, I saw two eyes staring in my room. And she's like, you sure you weren't dreaming? I was wide awake. You didn't have a gummy? I'm, I'm sober. You didn't drink anything? I haven't had a drop of drink since, since Aunt Ruth died. I haven't touched any liquor. And she's like, you think it might be her? Like, maybe. And she just said, I'll say some prayers and maybe that'll scare it off or what have you. And, and I didn't go to sleep for the rest of the night. I just kept looking at my door, just trying to see if I could see if whatever it was that looked into my room and I saw those eyeballs again and I'm just I looked up and I'm like is this you Aunt Ruth is this you I hope it's you and and as, as of right now nothing has ever happened since then I don't know if I don't know what it was I'm just gonna give you the I'm giving you the evidence as you see it now if Beardo if you're watching this I hope that um, you could come up with some kind of explanation for it, but I don't want to immediately say it was a ghost, but I can't find any other explanation for it. I've eliminated everything that could possibly be, and I'm like, something here. Something is here, because I'm seeing a lot of shit that I've never seen before. I've seen some stuff in my life that made me question like I've seen the experience the paranormal I've seen shadows move I've seen things outside of my window that I can't explain I've seen a lot of shit but this this hits a bit different now that's that you don't have to believe me I'm not trying to do this I'm not saying all this shit because uh, uh, because I'm just gonna be like those channels and say oh I got this other, my house is haunted I'm just sharing with my experience with you I've shared all the evidence with you, I've shared my first-hand experiences with you, with the people involved, and you can make of it whatever you will. This happened to me, this happened to my family, and I'm not saying my house is haunted, or there are ghosts, or spirits, or demons, or poltergeists, or whatever that's been here. I am only sharing it. You can, you're free to believe it, you're free to question it, you're free to do whatever you want with it, with this information. But I'm just saying, this is what happened. And I felt like sharing it on this spookiest of seasons. So that's been my experience. And I want to thank everybody for just listening in and being so receptive to it. And I'll probably make a, um, a clip of this and I'm going to send it to Beardo and see what he has to say. Because the guy is pretty, pretty damn chill, pretty damn awesome. A little blunt sometimes. But I still like him. 